All right, so uh, what we've been talking about in class has been uh, about series and parallel circuits. We, we've really only discussed series circuits. So in a series circuit, if you remember, we have the voltage source, like a battery, and then we would have our resistors, whatever they are, they could be actual resistors or light bulbs or anything else that can cause resistance in a, a circuit. And we have it in such a way that's like this, where there's only one single current loop uh, current will uh, go out of the positive side of the battery and into the negative, so we know it's going uh, this direction. So there's our current, and then, then we have the voltage of the, the battery as being V. If we call these R1, R2, and R3, then we know that the voltages across each one of these has to add up to be the voltage here. Right? That's really just conservation of energy. Voltage is potential energy per unit coulomb, or how much energy per unit coulomb is going through the circuit, and the uh, amount of coulombs is described by the current. So according to Ohm's law, we know that V is equal to I times R. Well, we have to talk about what voltage, what current, what resistance we're talking about. Well, the current throughout the entire system, throughout the entire circuit, is the same. The current here, here, and here is all the same. But the voltages might not be, depending on how the resistances are. If the resistances aren't the same, then the voltages won't be the same. So we know that the total voltage, being the voltage of the battery, has to be equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. And this can be extended onto how many voltages you have. According to Ohm's law, we know that this is saying that it's the current multi uh, multiplied by the total resistance is equal to the current times each one of the resistances in the circuit. Right? And we know that we could factor out an I from this side, but we can just realize that the fact that every term has an I in it. So every term with an I, the I can go away. And we are left with an equation for the total resistance in a circuit. Here's the total resistance. RT is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. And that can go on and on and on. Okay. And sometimes this is known as the equivalent resistance. And that just means that, hey, if you have... Uh, 6 ohms here, and you have a 3 ohm here, and let's say you have a 5 ohm here, you could redraw this entire circuit as being a voltage source, same voltage source that has a battery, and a single resistor of, let's see, 6 and 5 is 11, 11 and 3 is 14, so there's 14 ohms. This and this circuit, these two circuits, are really the same when it talks about how much current is being drawn from the battery. They're exactly the same. Current is going to be exactly the same according to uh, V is equal to I times R. So we can do a little uh, fun with this. Not fun, but uh, you know what I mean. We can do a little bit of calculations. If we know that the total resistance is equal to 14, and this is basically the same circuit here, then we can say that if the voltage, let's say uh, we have a 12 volt battery, just to make things a little bit interesting, then what is the current that is going through this circuit? Remember that these two circuits have exactly the same current. So if uh, V is equal to I times R, then I is equal to V divided by R, which gives us 12 volts divided by 14 ohms. And when we stick that into our calculator, we get that the current is equal to 0 0.86 amps. So now that we have the current in the entire circuit, then we can take this current and multiply it by each of the individual resistances. I'll do that in red. And uh, we should get a voltage for each individual one. So if we take current, V is equal to I times R, take the current, multiply it by the resistance. Let's just take R1. 0 0.86 amps and multiply it by the R1 value, which we had was 6 ohms. Then we can do 0.86 times 6, and that gives us a voltage drop of 5.16 volts. We take uh, the next one, I times R2, that would be 0 0.86 amps times 3 ohms. 0.86 times 3, that gives us 2.58 volts. And if you do the very last one, V is equal to 
IR3, 0.86 amps times, uh, what was the last one? 5 ohms. So 0.86 times 5. That gives 4.3 volts. All right, if you add all this together, 5.16 plus 2.58 plus 4.3, that gives us 12.04 volts. There's a 4. 12.04 volts, and we know that uh, because the current was it wasn't actually 0.86, it was 0.85, something or other. So it, this is, does give us 12 volts, which is a little off because of rounding, uh, which is, in fact, the voltage that is given by the battery. So this is how you would handle a series circuit, no matter what kind of resistors you have in there. This is how you do uh, do it all all day long. So we can now go through and talk about parallel circuits. And a parallel circuit is like what you did in the lab where you had a light bulb uh, connected like this, and then you might have connected a second light bulb that looked like that, and maybe even a third light bulb that looks like this. So you have uh, three light bulbs, and if you nix one of them, if you take out one of them, the other two can still stay on because they all have the same connection to the battery or have their own individual connection to the battery. So if that's the case, then that means this voltage, this voltage, and this voltage is all the same voltage as the battery. Okay, and so we have voltage here. It uh, does not get divided up amongst the components like it does in series. It gets uh, the same throughout all of them. And if you did this with light bulbs, you'd see those light bulbs on each one of them is the same brightness. But what about current? So if current's coming out like this, and it gets to a point like this where it's a junction, then we know some of the current's going to go this way, but some of the current is going to go this way. So that means that the current splits. You can think about it as in terms of a, uh, a river hitting a fork. Some of it uh, is going to go in one direction, and the other part of it's going to go in the other direction. But if you add up the current here and the current here, they have to add up to the current that you see going into the junction. This is really just conservation of charge. So if we talk about there being a current, and here, I'm going to do that in a different color. If we say that there's a current here, we call that I1, we say there's a current here, I2, and a current here, I3, then we know that the total current has to be equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Well, each one of these has a specific resistance to it. Let me do that in a different color. Okay, we have uh, R1, R2, and R3. And according to Ohm's law again, V is equal to I times R. That means I is equal to V divided by R. So this is going to say the voltage of the battery, the total voltage divided by the total resistance, is equal to V divided by R1 plus V divided by R2 plus V divided by R3, and so on and so on. It depends on how many you have in parallel. So if that's the case, then voltages are all the same. They go away. That means that the total resistance in a circuit like this is 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and so on and so on. Okay. Now that also means that no matter how many resistances you add, you're always going to have to end up taking the inverse of it at the end, which is going to make it to be a really small resistance, or at least a smaller resistance than what you would see if you hook these up into series. So a smaller resistance value means that you're going to have a higher current value in a circuit like this. So this makes, makes these circuits a little bit more dangerous because you can end up pulling a lot of current depending on how many resistors you end up having in parallel. Uh, that could be a safety issue. So let's just uh, do a quick example. What if we had 3 ohms here? and uh, 7 ohms here, and 2 ohms here. So we have 3, 7, and 2. So what would be the equivalent resistance, or the total resistance for there? So the total resistance is going to be 1 over 3 ohms plus 1 over 7 ohms plus 1 over 2 ohms. And that means that uh, it's 1 over RT, and this is going to be some weird number, some weird fraction, and I don't even care about putting that into uh, terms of fractions, why don't I just put it into 
my tangent in the calculator. One divided by three plus one divided by seven plus one divided by two gives us a 0 0.976, yada, yada, yada. But you have to remember that this is one over RT, one over RT, and that means that uh, you have to actually flip it and do one divided by 0 0.976, uh, which gives us 1.02 ohms. Now this number does not look as nice as the series number, right? It does not look as nice. Uh, and if you take a look at it, it's actually always lower. It, this one is lower than the, the lowest resistance value that we have, which was 2. So your equivalent resistance, your total resistance for a circuit like this is always going to be lower than any of your resistors together. So if that, that is the case, and we have, let's say we have a 12-volt battery, then a 12-volt uh, battery is going to be equal to some current times 1.02 uh, ohms. So that means the current in this particular situation, the total current, would be 12 divided by 1.02. And that gives us a total current of 11.76 amps. 11.76 amps. That is a lot compared to what we had earlier. Now you can go back through and you can take each individual resistor and knowing its voltage, which is 12 volts, and knowing its uh, resistance, you could calculate the current through each one of these branches. And if you add up all three of those currents, according to this equation here, you should end up getting 11.76 amps. So I'm going to leave that for you to do, possibly, in a question.